What's up, chums? Sharky here, and welcome back to the Shark Bites podcast. I am with Kalani today. Say hi. I'm tired. I'm tired. (laughs) Honestly, I am too. Like, I feel like every week has just been draining me. It, It feels like midnight, but it's not. It's not midnight, but it feels and looks like midnight. Yeah, it's throwing me off. I've been staying up late lately, and I probably shouldn't, because, like, I have to get up for work at six. I've been staying up till midnight almost every night. I think Saturday I stayed up until, like, four in the morning and then fell asleep. Dang! I was, I don't even remember what I was doing. I think I was drawing or something. Hmm. Okay, valid excuse. That's when I make my best drawings, is at 4 a.m. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, how have you been? Uh, it's been going. I already miss Halloween. Like, I missed Halloween after the the day after. I was crying. <laughs> I'm, I'm just now kind of like, yes, Halloween's over. I I need to just embrace that it is Christmas season, so I'm not miserable. But it's, and I'm but getting it's into not, the spirit. Though. It's Thanksgiving I, season. I I know, but sometimes you just have to accept it. No. <laughs> just, mm. You gotta accept your fate. I had a potluck at work last week for like an early Thanksgiving. Oh, how'd that go? Better than I expected. Uh, I ended up bringing a a cherry pie. Hmm. I didn't actually like make it from scratch. It was a frozen one that I baked. Um, but everybody liked it, so hey, that's all that matters. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I took my ice cream back though because we already had some, so I stole it from the freezer today. I mean, no one said you had to be super nice. I mean, it's my sure. ice cream anyway. I paid for it, so I'm taking it back. Is it just me or is there something about ice cream in winter that just has a really good taste? Yeah. Like, it, you shouldn't want ice cream at this time of year, but it tastes so good. I literally just bought, like, two cartons of ice cream yesterday. Nice. Now, like as you're saying that, yeah. <laughs> now, now I must judge you. What flavor? Um. Well, my, my favorite is cookies and cream. You get a pass with that one. And I also like cookie dough. Okay. Is that the flavors you bought? Yes. You you pass this time. <laughs> I, I like the birthday cake one. I but, do too. I like that one too. But sometimes when you buy it, it either they do too much of that like icing swirl in it mm-hmm. or they don't do enough and it tastes off. Yeah. Or at least the last time I've bought it, like you get those first few bites and it's like perfect and then it's like hmm. I have had like overly sweet ice cream. I don't even- I don't think overly... It's almost like... Not like expired, but like slightly old. Ew. <laughs> slightly well, old cake. Kind of like, like you had that slice and some, and you kind of forgot about it. And it's still technically good. <laughs> but it's like slightly stale. You should call it like grandma's stale birthday cake or something. <laughs> that should be the flavor name. I I will get on that. (laughs) It's just like slightly stale. But but still edible. But edible. (laughs) Anyways, we're not talking about ice cream today. We're talking about scams. Oh, well, that's not sweet. No, it's not. (laughs) I have had some experiences that I would love to share with you. Please do share. 
so I don't know if I told you this, but I'm slowly breaking down my uh, aquarium. Oh, I I really just don't have the time to keep up with it, and I have Travis to take care of, and it's just kind of an extra thing. Um, I pretty much sold all of my coral except for like one and my fish. I still have him. But the one good fish. Well, I'm planning on giving him to my local fish store. I already messaged them and they said that they could give him a good home. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the reason I brought that up is because I listed the tank for sale and all of the stuff that comes with it already just to get interest on it. Um, and I have been messaged twice this week by two scammers that use the exact same script on me. <laughs> and I That's told- That's kind of funny. I even, like, called them out on it. I was like, you guys are using the exact same script. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway. So- That's great. Well, you know how Facebook is. Like- A cesspool. I forgot to mention that. So I listed it on Facebook Marketplace, which I know, yeah, no. <laughs> like, it's, I use it for local stuff mostly, like big stuff that I can't ship. Um, But, I mean, people still message you about scams and stuff. So I don't know if you've ever used Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, once, never again. I just get, like, so many scam messages on there. Um, so the the ones that I got this week... So, just keep in mind, like, this is not an item that's, you know, light. Like, it's, it's a aquarium it. with a stand, you know, with a filter and, like, all this heavy stuff. So, like... It's it, hefty. It can't really be shipped. It's something that, you know, has to be picked up or whatever. Um, so the the two people that reached out to me, they started the same way. They asked me if the item was still available and if it was in good condition and where I was located. And I told them like a vague, you know, answer like, oh, I'm in Austin or whatever. Yeah, um, like you're not gonna just be like, "Here's my address." Exactly, and one of them asked me right after that what my bank details were. <laughs> just uh, jumping right to it. I was like, "I'm not telling you, you asshole." <laughs> well, sorted that out pretty quick. Well, that yeah, that scammer must have not been very experienced because they just cut to the chase they were like so what's your bank information i was like i'm not telling you that i think <laughs> I, I think i said something like well you don't need that if you're picking it up with cash right and they just like didn't answer <laughs> they realized that they fucked up and then the other person well they both after that like asked me if i had this thing called zell i don't know if you've ever heard of that yeah i've from, like scammer videos I've watched it seems like something popular they use so they'll ask for like your Zelle or cash app or like something similar to that or Venmo or something like that yeah Um, and if you tell them that you don't have that then they'll ask you to make an account which I'm not about to go out of my way to do that for one cell I'm like no, you can just give me cash, and I say that every time. Yeah. And then another thing that I noticed is they both asked me if they could pay now and then send someone to pick it up, like send someone else, like their brother or their, I don't know, cousin or something. <laughs> insert random relative or sometimes they'll say like oh i'm out of town can i you know can you like can i pay now and then pick it up later it's just very shady like the way that oh they yeah heard it. um and then i don't know if you heard about this other facebook marketplace 
scam that was going on i think last year uh people were going around asking for a google voice code that's weird so like there's this thing called google voice that's like a verification type thing with your phone or something Mm -hmm. and they basically ask you like they'll ask you your phone number and then they will send you a code to that phone number and they ask you to tell them on Facebook what the code is. So they get access to your stuff. Basically, yeah. It's just like a way to hack your, your phone, pretty much. Quote unquote hack. And I almost did it. Like, I almost did this one because I had never heard of Google Voice and I thought it was just like a proof that you are who you are type of thing. Yeah. And I I didn't feel right about it. And I googled uh, Facebook scam Google voice codes and there was an article that came up talking about it. Like that it was an active scam that people were doing on Facebook. And I was like, oh, well, I'm glad that I googled this before I said anything. Yeah, that could have gone very bad. So I just, like, blocked all of these people and reported them to Facebook, which is what you should do. Don't even give them the time of day. Have you ever had something like that happen? Well, I've had where, you know, like how, well, with older relatives, how they might lose their Facebook password or they click on every different article they see and something gains access Mm -hmm. well i've had that happen with older relatives and then they're like oh i can't get in my facebook so they make a new one and so i'll get a message and it'll have their profile picture their name and they're like hello you know my name and like hey kalani and i'm just like hey uh something wrong people don't talk to me yeah and they're like oh it it seems normal at first and then it's like this is a little off and then they quickly get into this like oh i've got this money or whatever basically the same thing but like the government is giving out you know Mm -hmm. and i'm just like I get bored sometimes. I'm like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And then they're just like, yeah, you just need to do this. I'm like, no, I won't do that. Like, can't you get the money for me? Yeah. And they're like, no, no. Or I've had where they're like, I'll be like, you're not this person. Yes, I am. I'm like, really? Your profile is like a day old. So tell me something about myself then. And oh, that they reminds won't say me. nothing. Just- and they'll never say anything. And I'm just like, I even had one just be like, go off yourself. That no, reminds me of like the Facebook accounts that tried to scam me. <laughs> Their Facebook profile pictures were like generic white families. Mm-hmm. Which just made me laugh because I was like, oh my god, this is so fake. And it, it, it didn't even say like where they were from or like it didn't have any info on it at all. Yeah. So. Just. But I love when they're just like, no, no, I am this person. It's like, well, you're not doing a good job of proving it. <laughs> yeah, I always ask people to like prove it like because there's nothing wrong with asking questions you know yeah especially if it's like an older family member that you know has remade their facebook account a few times you know Mm Hmm. well and i just the other day like when this happened they asked me where i was located and i I said where are you located and they wouldn't answer so that's red flag Mm mm-hmm Because if you're going to ask me, why can't I ask you? Yeah. I mean, it's only fair. Mm Mm-hmm. I 
I just wonder how some people fall for these. And uh, yeah, honestly, that's the thing. Like some of them are really obvious, and then others are like harder. Yeah, especially when it's something like with newer technology, and it's like, hmm, is this a scam or not? I remember one time, like something popped up on my computer, and you know, it was a newer laptop at the time. And I couldn't afford a new one. We had just moved, you know, to our home now. And something came up and I had a call come in. Or I had called them. I don't remember. Because I'd never heard of scams like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm panicking because I'm like, oh no, oh no. Like, I can't lose this laptop. And the guy's like, I need you to give me this number. Now, in my brain, I'm thinking... Like, whenever you've had to call tech, tech, tech support, mm -hmm. and they'll, like, send something, or you give them a thing, and then they get access to your computer, and they help guide you through. Mm -hmm. So, I'm thinking that's that is, and my husband comes in, and he's like, this is a scam, just hang up, just hang up. I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure? And he's like, yeah. And I hang up, and... I, can, I just shut off my computer, waited a bit, and it was fine. Looking back, it's like, wow, I was stupid. But I've but never heard of anything like that. I mean, it can happen to anybody. Like, it doesn't matter how tech savvy you are. Like, I I was even telling my mom that um, way back when I had started, I, I don't want to say the term working, but I had signed on with avon like oh. i was selling avon products for a time and this lady tried to send me a check for seven thousand dollars and like she wanted me to deposit it and then refund her half of it and only take like what how much your items cost you know and that's definitely a big scam definitely but at the time like i had never experienced this like i had never seen yeah. something like this so i literally got the check in the mail like and i was you know i brought it to my mom and i was like yeah this lady gave me a check seven thousand dollars and she wants me to deposit it and my mom took one look at it and was like that's a scam i was like it is she's like yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, when me and my husband, when we were in between jobs and we couldn't get any jobs, and we were real desperate, and he had, I had found an ad, and I've seen them around town, like where people will have decals put on their car, mm -hmm. you know, have it wrapped, and they, you know, they get paid for that. So I'm just like, okay, and I asked him about how he felt about doing that. And we get in contact with the guy, he sends a check, and he takes the check, because the check was supposed to be paid to the guy who was going to come wrap the car. And the banks informed us, this, I'm very sorry, this is a scam, but we can see that you're not trying to scam us, so we won't put your account on hold. That's how they get your account number, by the way. Like, if somebody sends you a check in the mail and you deposit it, they can get your bank information. Yeah, and then I had where I almost started working for Aerotech, which, if you don't know, is uh, those Kirby vacuums. Oh, okay. Now, growing up, my family had a Kirby vacuum, so I didn't put anything together. And again, you know, desperate, needed a job, all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So I go in, I do the training for like... A weekend or whatever. It was easy, you know. Put this together. Uh, you know, here's the demo. It does this. It does that. Real easy. The moment, and I should have trusted my gut, but when I had to get into the car, mm -hmm. that like a uh, van that we had to drive in, and. I thought we were going to be, because they never really give you, like, the big info. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, like, uh, in the vehicle. And they're heading out 
real far, like an hour or two away, maybe three. And uh and the person's just driving like really fast, like twenty miles over the speed limit. I'm having a panic attack. Oh my and I'm god. I'm just like I have I'm just like, I have made mistakes. Mm. And the way they tell me is I was supposed to work in the office. And then instead they decide, no, you're going to be walking the streets trying to sell it and get appointments set up for the demonstrators to come in. Uh -uh. Well, the moment I got back home, I had a little breakdown and then I just was like, nope. My life is worth more than that. I heard this story. Uh, I, I can't verify if this is true or not, but I heard a story one time where somebody had applied for a job on like some online site and they went in for, I think, an interview and were offered the job like on the spot and they were having them fill out paperwork. And it turned out to be a human trafficking scam. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like they were threatened and like they they got out. Like they were able to call the police and stuff, but... That's good. But they had like actually walked into a building and like actually talked to a person. Yeah, that's And everything. Nuts. Like, it seemed legit, but, like, it was a, a human trafficking thing, and they picked up on it, like, when they were in there. But I'm like, that is so damn oh scary. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, a more recent scam I've dealt with, you know, like, how on Facebook or on TikTok you'll see ads? Mm hmm Well, me being a bigger-chested person, I have a hard time with bras. And you know, like, those things where, like, they stick on and they're like a bra? Mm -hmm. Well, I had seen an ad for one, and it was plus-size people and those with bigger chest. So I'm looking at it, looking, and you know how sometimes before, on websites, before they can calculate shipping, you have to put in, like, your payment info, and then it shows you? Yeah. So I thought, okay, it's just doing that. And, and I'm like, you know, that's a little too much. I'm not going to get it. And I cancel. Well, it went ahead and took my money. They did ship it. I'll give them that. It was a horrible product. Mm. But I had filed with my bank and told them, and I got my money back. That's good that you're able to get it back. But that's the thing. Like, you see, like, like I'll see where small businesses are on TikTok. Mm -hmm. and I'll be like, oh, that's such a great thing. I want to buy it. But then it's like... I don't know. That's I don't how get they scammed. get you. That's how they get you, though. I know, but like you see people, and I love people being able to support their small businesses or even artists. That's one. Like mm -hmm. I see these people with their art, and I'm like, I really want to commission this person, but it's like, but I can't guarantee that the quality is going to be there. You I, know? Have, I have like, a similar experience. Do share. Um, okay, so I'm sure you're well aware that a lot of sites will try to scam sell Disney products. Oh, yeah. And I fell for one. <laughs> oh, no. So I found this website. I was Okay. Let me let me back up. So I was looking for this Luca pin set that was like a Disney store, you know, exclusive like, or whatever. Like enamel pins? Yes, enamel pins. But it was like okay. a set a set from the movie Luca. Okay. You don't have the best luck with enamel pins, it seems. <laughs> I've I, well, I've got some stories. Um <laughs> Yeah, for anybody who wants to see uh, the video of the first time I got scammed with pins, I made a, a video on it. I can link it in the description, but that was a whole mess. But no, this time, this was like a couple months ago, I think, or, or like sometime this year. But I had found them like at the cheapest price on this website that looked legit like it had like the little lock up in the corner like by the the web url yeah 
and they took multiple different types of payment and it looked like a legit like disney outlet store website and yeah i placed an order for the pin set it was like 30 bucks i think um with shipping and i got a notification that it shipped and i was like okay like so far so good you know um mm-hmm. and i waited i knew like that it was coming from overseas which i know sounds like a red flag but i've bought stuff internationally before so like i wasn't that worried and about that's it that's something that always makes me nervous too yeah like i've i've bought a lot of stuff internationally but usually if you see like china on the shipping number or whatever be, be cautious that's a red flag but so it probably took about mm, like a month to get here i think a little over a month I, and i kind of forg- i forgot right. about it i kind of forgot about it cuz i was like you know it's from overseas like there's no telling when it'll get here but so I finally got it and it matched the tracking number. I open it up and what do you think? What what was in it? A little thing that said fucking got ya. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? there was uh I don't even know how to describe this. Okay. It well, it wasn't what I ordered for sure. Um What? No. It was a <laughs> ring, like a ring, like a jewelry ring that was two sizes too small for me. It was like a seven, and it came in like this little red box. Uh-huh. But but the funny thing is, it was a knockoff of a big name brand jewelry company. <laughs> and i was like what the hell is this like it's not not only is it not what i ordered but it's also a knockoff ring from a bigger company <laughs> so i just threw it in the trash because i was like that's what it is really yeah it's probably got lead in it because it's from china <laughs> so i was like Man, I'm out 30 bucks. You know what, though? I just let it go. I didn't try to get my money back because I had used my debit card. I mean, at least it was card. only 30 bucks. Yeah. Well, and then I was like, well, I used my debit card. Like, I hope that's not an issue. I mean, they never tried to take any more money out. So I just well, left that's it. that's good. I don't know. I did make my bank aware of it. I said, if you see anybody with this username trying to take money out, you know it's a scam but i was pissed <laughs> i bet i wanted my I pins would be too. <laughs> but did i tell you that juimi got scammed no what happened okay so this happened earlier this year he actually got scammed on steam really on steam yeah exactly that was my reaction too because i was like you would think steam would be pretty secure because it's a program like it's not even a i mean like you get the games where like they didn't even try this is junk but usually you can tell that from the beginning it's not even like a website it's like a program on your computer yeah but okay so he told me that some somebody messaged him on steam claiming to be an admin and they told him that they had found like fraudulent games on his account and that he was going to be removed and what? they took $500 from his steam account oh my gosh like somehow they were able to hack his uh card that was linked to his steam account and they stole five hundred dollars oh my gosh and i was just like how would you fall for that though because like you didn't even ask them if they were really an admin like to prove it and he just he believed them 
I mean, I'm not, like, mad because, I mean, he's the victim. I'm not trying to make it seem like, you know, I'm an asshole. No, but I was but it's like, just, no. how? Well, I feel like that when someone you know who you know is smarter or smart enough to not fall for that stuff, it's like, you can't help but feel that bit of anger of, like, how, but also you feel bad and sad for them. Yeah, like, obviously, I, you know, I love him. I felt really bad for him. But I was like, if anybody tries this on you again, like, don't listen to anybody on Steam. Except me. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah. My and that's not a little amount of money. That's almost like $1,000 no. right there. Yeah, that's... Oof. Yeah, he was very angry, obviously. Uh, he shut I, down I his card immediately, Good. called the bank, had them shut it down. See, that's part of why I use PayPal, like, when I Me buy too. games and stuff. Me too. Because at least I have some sense of security. Very, very rarely do I ever use my card information. The same. Like, the only time I ever would is maybe, like, I don't know, like a... I, I have used like it for pins before, like, on small business websites. Which I know sounds risky, but, like, usually it's an artist that I'm familiar with, and I know that they're not a scammer, so... And that's the thing. Some artists, they're not scammers. Or even biz small businesses, and then one day they're just like, you know what? I'm gonna see if I can get some extra money and try this because I mean, they're struggling. And that's true. I have had, you know, like I've I mean, heard I, stories. I feel like everyone. I feel like every artist has the thought of, you know, I could just scam someone and probably get away with it. But then you don't do it because you know it's wrong. Yeah, but I mean. Well, I remember, like, there was a big name, like, artist that I had commissioned for some art that was on the lam for cheating people out of fursuits. They had stolen, like, $5,000. Oh, yeah, I think I remember hearing about that. Or 15000 not 5000 It was It was a lot. Um, I don't yeah. think, I don't think she ever got caught. I think she got away with it. Because I never heard uh, anything. Karma will get her. I hope so. <laughs> Might take some time. But yeah, I've noticed that in the furry fandom too. Like there's a lot of scammers in the furry fandom. Whether Shock. it be whether it be like fursuits or you know, art, like paying for art, people just steal money. It's nuts anymore. And it gets so bad around the holidays. That's the other thing that I wanted to bring up is like usually around this time, like scammers get a little bit more better ballsy. at scamming. Well, ballsy, but also they're trying to make it more realistic. So like I've I've actually this is crazy. So like there was an email sent out at my work that was uh warning people it was from hr i think and they were warning people um that there was a there was a text scam going on where i guess like people that works work for my company um their phone numbers were being texted like hey our company or your company's giving away like gift cards or whatever and all you need to do is click this link and huh. okay so you know how like at, at your job usually they tell you not to click these things yeah well apparently some people had had clicked on some stuff and were getting scammed and i was just like guys we have training on this <laughs> what are you doing oh my gosh <laughs> I'm guessing these are people who are probably older than 40. Probably. It's gotta be. Because, like, I mean, they tell us specifically, you know. Don't do it. Don't do this stuff. Don't do not do the thing. But I, equal bad the, stuff. The crazy thing is, like, I read the, the examples that they were showing us. And 
they sound legit. I mean, like, they try to make it look as legit as possible. And I've even had stuff sent to my own, like, personal email address with, like, um, Apple ID, like, to verify your password. But, like, it looks legit if I was, you know, not yeah. as smart as I am. I would probably <laughs> fall for it. Um, but the the only way that I know that those aren't real is because the Apple ID is not my Apple ID. Like, the email address that they're sending it to is not what my ID is. And then... And that's the crazy thing. Even with email, sometimes just opening the email can leave you vulnerable to them getting into your systems. Yeah, and like... um not just the Apple ones, but, like, I've had ones that say, like, you have a package out for delivery. Click here to, like, verify, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I've had those, and I'm just like, no. Well, what's funny is they're usually Amazon, and I never buy stuff from Amazon. So I'm like, I know that's not real, because I don't buy stuff from Amazon. <laughs> now, see, I... I Call me a bad person if you want, but I do buy stuff from Amazon. Well, I can't say but... I never have, but usually I buy from eBay. But, but uh, like, I know when the email comes in that's like, hey, your thing's shipped. Not, like, the scam ones. Like, I know how to watch for the real emails. Yeah, so like anybody listening, just be on guard this holiday season about that because they get really bad around this time because they know people are like trying to get deals on stuff and buying stuff. So just be really careful. If you get an email that says you want a free Xbox Five, <laughs> it's probably fake. Yeah, I don't trust, <laughs> hey, I don't trust anything on the internet anymore. Like, whether it's a scam or not, I just don't trust it. <laughs> I've I've never held trust in the internet. No. Nah. Me neither, really. Maybe when I was younger. I mean, when you're trying. But... I, I feel like we were all stupid and little at some point. But. It's kind of nuts, some of the scams out there. And some of the people running the scams, they can get mean. Yeah. You ever watch Scammer Payback? I watch uh, Kit Boga, his YouTube uh, channel. I like Kit Boga. Yeah, he's like driving scammers crazy all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Now, see, I like watching Scammer Payback because they know him at this point, And they're like, is this pierogi? <laughs> yeah, and, they're on a first name basis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's he's got some really good advice though. Like I've honestly learned a lot from watching his channel. Sorry, I wasn't able to hear what you said. I said uh he's got a lot of good advice. I learn a lot from his channel. Yeah. And I like with uh, Scammer Payback how he actually sets up funds to where when he finds someone that's been scammed, if he can't get reversed quickly, mm -hmm. that he actually has where his community has sent him money to give back to these people. I think it was a stream I was watching on Kit Boga's channel where, like, he... <laughs> I don't even know how to word it. Like, he was having people spend his fake money for him to make the scammer oh, mad. Oh, where he pretend where he, they pretend to be a different scammer trying to scam the person that he's pretending to be. They were like to make the other scammer fight with them. Yeah, and they were like fake buying stuff off of Amazon and spending all the gift cards and stuff. <laughs> it's funny. <Yeah. laughs> I love the ones yeah. where he he pretends to be like an old lady. Yeah. Ethel. I give him credit with the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel, Mildred. Yeah. All the different old lady names they pick. <laughs> or when they pretend to be like an old man or an old lady and then they bring in like the husband or 
Yeah, he's uh, really good at it. He's good at it. Because I've seen where it'll be like, hold on, let me get my husband. Richard! <laughs> Richard! <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> and then the poor, I, I say the poor, but Scammer's just like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Wasn't there one where, like, the old man was, like, trying to hook up with Ethel or something like that, and they were yeah. talking to the scammer about it? Yeah, because oh, so many times they'll be like, it's my love, sweetie, honey. <laughs> and, and I'm like, yes, I'll run away with you, but first we need to do this. Because they're preying on these lonely old people. I remember that, yeah. And he was like, he was like, can you pretend to be my son so I can get a hot date with my neighbor? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my so- grandson or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so that reminds me, so... Okay, so I take care of my grandpa, Mm -hmm. an elderly man, and he'll get scam calls, and I can tell when it's a scam call, because it always makes a beep at the beginning also, Mm -hmm. and I'll be like, Southern Illinois Crematorium, you stab him, we slab him. (laughs) That's good. Or Southern Illinois Sperm Bank, you yank it, we bank it. How can I help you today? <laughs> oh my and god. And they hang up so quick. That's hilarious. I need to come up with something like that. Oh, I've, I've got so many of these. I got it. My poor grandpa doesn't always realize I'm on the phone and he's just like, what? <laughs> I don't usually get phone scams just because I never like answer my phone, but... um. I got one well, the, he, the other he day. He has a house phone, so. Oh, yeah. Those are really bad for phone scams. But, uh. Yeah. I got a call from what was claiming to be my bank about some questionable charges. But I'm like, my bank never calls me. Like, they would send me an email before they would call yeah. me. Like, unless it was like, unless it was like actually urgent that they get a hold of you Uh, banks don't care i just i don't think it was legit i think it was a scam call because it just seemed shady well that and if it was legit and it was something urgent they would have gotten a hold of you again that and it was automated yeah that's and i feel like that's why so many like places shouldn't have where it's like a robot talking to you Because, or those automated systems, because you can't always separate, you know, them from the others sometimes. If it's automated, I'm not going to talk to them, period. Like, I don't, even if it was legit. (laughs) But it's legit, unless it's something where I actually have to deal with it, because it's like, sadly, I must contact these people. Well, the only- Then I usually won't. The only, like, automated thing that I actually listen to is, like, Walgreens or something if I have a prescription to pick up. But other than Ugh. that, it's like, nah. That That's Kroger's for me, and I will just, I just hit zero. And it's like, we will contact you with a pharmacist. And then if I get the regular line for some reason, I'm like, pharmacy, okay. And I just keep, because I hate punching in and doing the automated system Mm -hmm. to do a refill. Yes. It's like, I want to confirm with someone that this has been received and this will be refilled. Yeah, I I hate, like, well, you know me, like, I don't like calling anybody, period. But, like, if I have to, I hate it when it's, like, all automated. Well, that and for stuff like with medicine, it's like... I would rather have the confirmation from the pharmacist or a team member there that it will be refilled and when it will be ready instead of a computer saying it because the computer may not know like how behind they actually are. You know? Yeah. I <laughs> I hate it when like you try to call like a customer service line and it, they just never pick it up. So, our old internet provider that's it brings me to that (laughs) they our internet was out 
constantly. They were supposed to be the best new internet. They weren't. That's what they all say. Would... <laughs> well, it worked great over at my mom's house, so that's why oh, we got it. Okay. Well, it sucked here. Mm-hmm. And I would call. Your and it's like uh your your weight is appreciated. Please hang on the line. A member will be with you shortly. And I can still remember the tune (laughs) and then it would be like and it do like something at like the 15 minute or 30 minute wait this is how long I would wait it would get to like 30 or 45 minutes and it would hang up on me what and I'm just like oh no 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 (laughs) and I would call back and I'd leave so many voicemails and I got to a point where I was like is my internet going to work or not? Well, it seems like it's something with your equipment. I'm like, this is the equipment you guys just put up. Yep. <laughs> so many people have, like, joined them because they're great at first, and then it's terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, you get, like, the slightest wind, which, you know how the wind is here. Mm-hmm. And internet would be, you know, off and on. Or okay. a tower would go down. And it's like, we're paying like a hundred a month and we're getting like a week of service. I remember this one time my sister got locked out of her Apple ID and she had to call the Apple support line and it literally took them like six hours to respond. (laughs) Oh no. Like they had her on hold for six hours. I was like, are you kidding me? It would have been faster to go to an Apple store at that point. Yeah. Stupids. Ugh. And I feel like so many of these companies just rely on these systems now. And I feel like that's what's going to hurt a lot of their businesses. I had an an intrusive thought just now as you said that. Please share. <laughs> When I when I started my eBay account, like when eBay was a lot smaller than it is now, I actually mm-hmm. had the email to the CEO of eBay. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember like whenever I had a problem with like somebody who bought something from me or like I I I bought something from a seller that was like fraudulent or whatever. I yeah. I used that. You bet I did. I sent a direct message to the CEO and I would just say like, "Can you fix this now, please?" And they would. <laughs> that is amazing. I know. I didn't have to wait on the phone like customer service or anything. That like they just or fixed it. Or be sent through like the millions of layers of hell. Yes. To get in contact with the one person who might not even help you. Yeah, I was just like, hey, um, this person scammed me, or like, I don't remember, or like, this buyer, you know, they left negative feedback, and it's their fault, or whatever, and they would just be like, yeah, we can, we can, uh, take care of that for you. (laughs) I was like, all right. I don't know what happened to the, I don't know what happened to the email though. I think like it became defunct after so many years, but they're just like, they're just like, we can't let this email get out. (laughs) Well, yeah, honestly, I think a lot of people were, (laughs) Sharky has too much power. (laughs) I think a lot of people were abusing it. So, (laughs) but I just remember that that was literally like 10 years ago when that was a thing. But it just made me laugh. But can we just talk? Can I just rant about eBay for a second since we're on the topic? Go for it. Oh my god. I don't sell on there anymore just because, like, their fees now are outrageous. I think it's like a, for the final value fee, which is like, you know, however much you sell something for, they take a percentage. I want to say it's like 1.9% of whatever you made. 
Wow. Which can be like, so like, for example, if I sold something for, let me get out my calculator. <laughs> Let's say 25 Okay, if I sold something for $25, and this doesn't include shipping, we'll just say, because that's a separate thing. They take, with all of their, like, listing and miscellaneous, actually, I think it's more than 1.9. Let me look. <laughs> I I I want to know because it people need to know this. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, and then mind you, like if you use PayPal for payments too, like PayPal takes a cut too. Yeah. Okay. I'm, oh my god. Hmm. I, I was way off. <laughs> In a good or bad way? In a bad way. <laughs> How much is it? Okay, so I don't know why I said 1.9. That might be something else. Maybe I was thinking of Mercari. But, okay, it's actually 12.8 final value fee. So you're practically getting nothing. Okay, so if I sold something for $25... And they take their cut. That's like four dollars. That ain't worth it. So obviously, like the higher you sell something for, the more they're gonna take. So if I sold something for five hundred dollars, they take sixty four dollars out of the. Jeez. Bruh. That's not even including like the listing fees and stuff. That's so stupid. And taxes and postage and all that stuff. Ugh. It's so, so stupid. So you'd probably end up with like $350 from a $500 sale. <laughs> <laughs> Lame. Very. But it's not just that. Like, they've also changed the way that they do payments. Because, like, I remember even 10 years ago, like, when I started selling stuff, you would get paid immediately. Like, you can get access to your money immediately, regardless of if you've shipped the thing or not. Because they would, um, they'd give you access to your funds so that you can take the shipping out of it directly. So, like, they, you know... Which makes sense. Yes, but I guess what was happening, I mean, I wasn't doing this, but people were abusing that and, like, not paying full shipping and, like, trying to cut corners on shipping costs, which was screwing the postal service over. So they got mad about it, and now they're doing payments a different way, which they basically, I guess what they do now is eBay holds your money for let's see if if you're under i think it's if you're under a thousand feedback they hold it for like a week jeez and you don't have any access to it like you can print your shipping label but that's it like you can't you don't have access to it and they make you instead of paypal since they kind of like cut ties with paypal um mm -hmm. they send it directly to your bank account which could take one to three days business days so even Dang. E yeah even once you get access it could still take up to three days to get your money which is bullshit yeah and then like oh so if you have even if you have like over a thousand feedback like, they still, you know, like, they take their cut, and they'll still hold it for, like, a day. But it's just, I hate it. Like, I want it now. I sold the item now. Give me the money now. <laughs> Bless you. I like Mercari a little bit more. I don't know if you've ever used that, but... No. Um, they do have fees on there, but it's not as bad as eBay. I feel like eBay is just a lost cause at this point. 
for selling. Yeah. I do buy stuff on there still, but not selling. Okay, I, I think I'm I'm finished. I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been on my mind and I haven't been able to talk to anybody about it. It's frustrating. It is, because it's like I play by the rules. I do what I'm supposed to do, but they make everybody suffer regardless. Like, punish the people who break the rules, not the rule followers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hard finding a way when people get, you know, screwed over a lot, trying to find a system that'll help prevent that. Mm -hmm. But in other ways, then they're just screwing people over more. Going off of that, just in, like, my selling experience, um, I've had so many, like people leaving bullshit feedback on stuff that just isn't true because like they didn't read the listing or the item was damaged in shipping but that's not my fault because I packaged it well so yeah it's like once It'd be it one thing if it were your fault but... once it leaves my hands I have no control over where it goes or who's touching it you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> But um, I've also gotten a lot of packages. It's I, it's I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny. It pisses me off. Um, I've gotten a lot of packages where people will carelessly package things that I bought too, which pisses me off more than the other thing. Where it's like, for example, I bought a Oogie Boogie Funko Pop. Yeah, and the person shipped it in a bubble envelope like a big really yeah like a big bubble envelope and i was like are you kidding me like this is gonna get crushed it's in a box like huh. like just just because it's in a box doesn't mean like it can't get crushed you know what i'm saying like oh yeah if you if you're shipping something that's already in a box, you should put it in another box so that that box doesn't get crushed. Because these I mean, are like it makes sense. Because these are like collectibles, and I keep the box and everything. And so I ordered this, and it shows up in this like craptastic bubble envelope, like crushed to hell. I think I post a picture of it on Instagram. Um a while back but i was mad because i paid like i don't even know like 20 bucks for that and it was all crushed and bent and everything i'd have been mad so i think i ended up just reselling it instead of returning it because they had like a no returns policy but i was like bitch <laughs> it's in it's torn up like what what do you want me to say like package it properly it's just a pet peeve All there of mine. Is to it. I, I've even lost enamel pins in the mail because people don't know how to ship them. Sounds about right. I Over like the summer, like a couple years ago when I was living with my parents, I used to, that's when I started like buying a lot of like cheaper pins, you know, from people that just want to get rid of them. And, yeah. and they would throw them in like a regular letter envelope like no bubble wrap no just throw the pin in a letter envelope and put a stamp on it and i was like D okay i don't know if you know this but where do you think that envelope goes when it gets to the post office probably through a thing that processes them exactly. and possibly squishes them exactly what happens is it goes through a sorting machine that flattens out and stamps the postage onto it and what happens is if it's not completely flat that pin will shoot out of the envelope because it's being pushed down and it literally and if, busts out the side and if it doesn't shoot out it's probably just gonna get crushed and broke yeah or yeah like fall in the machine which 
it could cost the post office money so it's like why why wouldn't you pay like two dollars extra to put it in a bubble envelope not even that like i get my bubble envelopes from the dollar tree exactly but the postage for those isn't even that much it's like two bucks to ship it first class yeah but they what they do is they like even though i paid them to ship that correctly they try to save money and put it in a a letter envelope with a stamp on it i'm like i paid you shipping i paid for the shipping put it in a bubble envelope it's so irritating yeah like you're not asking for like high-end packing just you want your whatever you order to actually get there in one piece it's just people don't care like what happens to it they care more about the money than they do about (laughs) if the item gets there but you know what it's gonna cost you money if you do shit like that because i'm gonna complain about it and then I'm going to open up a case and you're going to have to refund me my money. So is it really saving money? No, it's not. <laughs> nope, not at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so heated about this, but like it's it's a, No, no, you're good. I'm just like you're not saving any money cuz I'm going to complain. Like so the pins that I would order, the the envelope would show up to my mailbox, but the pin would be gone, not in there. Who knows where? Because and it would just have like a hole in the envelope where it shot out of it, and I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> Jeez, it's not that hard. Just take those little extra steps, please. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> Not even extra steps, just the basic steps. Yes, please do the bare minimum. That would be great. (laughs) Okay, even if they didn't use packing in it, if they'd have put the pin in a bubble wrap envelope, it still would have had a better chance of getting to you then. A higher chance than what what I got, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (sighs) But anyway, we're we're past an hour now. Did you have anything else you wanted to add <laughs> or talk about? Tis the season for scamming. Yes, be careful out there. Use caution. Don't trust anybody. Especially Just be alert. Especially if you see a generic white family, don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> or if it is someone of your family, and they're messaging you and they don't usually talk to you. Or if it's a completely new message. Like never, like the kind where you've never talked before. Uh-huh. Proceed with caution. That's ridiculous. Like actually contact said person to see if it's a new account. That's crazy. Like the people would pretend to be your, your oh, family members. I've had it happen members. multiple times. That's ridiculous. Like who does this shit? I even had it happen twice with the same family member. Dang. I'm just like you guys ain't smart. Mm. I think my mom's account has gotten hacked like twice. I mean, and I don't really blame them for clicking on like the articles where you know it's actually interesting stuff because they don't usually know to look to see if it's secure. And even then, if it's a secure site. You never know. Yeah. Well, back in the day, like, when the internet was still in its infancy, really the only sites that had, you know, like, malware and stuff was, like, porn sites. But it's everywhere now. Like, you can literally go oh, anywhere. Yeah. But anyways, thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.